One of my fans is on right now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? Give me that radiant smile. There you go. <laughs> That's it right there when you chuckle. Okay. So what's your question, my dear? You you know, you you ask the question. What what do you want to know? What um Okay. All right. We're going to do this in reverse order. Okay. Um, are you currently in a relationship? Just say yes or no. Okay. When was the last time you were in a relationship? Uh, about six months ago. Okay. And when I say relationship, this is where the penis got to go inside the vagina kind of relationship. Okay. Yeah. So it ended six months ago. How long were you two together? About eight months. Eight months. How did you two meet? We met on Plenty of Fish. Okay, Plenty of Fish. <laughs> you mean the bottom of the barrel? <laughs> I'm just uh, kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. I think out real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, you met on Plenty of Fish. You dated for eight months. How far apart do you two live from each other? Lived about an hour and a half apart. Hour and a half apart. How often did you see each other? You said it was an eight-month relationship, correct? No. Yeah. Eight months. How? Uh, and it ended six months ago. Uh, how often did you see each other? We saw each other about every three weeks, but it was me driving to him. It was okay. right when I first started listening to you. And yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, this isn't I'm, I'm going to keep going with my questions, but I have to pause on this. Ladies, men are rather lazy. Men are rather lazy. And women will oftentimes make the effort and they'll give you a legitimate excuse why he can't come to you. And it's so legitimate. You're like, but I, I want to be with this person. So you'll make the effort. Let me just tell every woman watching that's fucking bullshit. Okay. It is bullshit that he didn't make effort towards you. So that is not a red, that's a gigantic red flag, red flag, signing flag, signing. Okay. Okay. So, um, so you saw him every three and a half weeks. So during eight months, that's every that's uh, three times every two months. So three times eight. That's you saw him physically roughly twenty four times. Is that about right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Rough, probably a little so less than that. Oh, okay. Who so who better. ended the relationship? After listening to you, I ended the relationship. You did it. Okay. Yes, you got okay. me on the right track. Now, okay, now why did you end the relationship? Because um, I didn't see any future in it. I I really want to have a partner, and okay. uh, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't going to do it. Okay, so um, how did you end the relationship? Um, well, I wanted to do like a conscious uncoupling thing. Okay, but okay. no. He wasn't. Did you do it over the phone or a text no, message? No, or no, 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 I did it face to face. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, not over the do phone. Do you remember exactly what you said to him to end the relationship? I said, um, I really love you. <laughs> this is so hard for me. Aww. And I can't do this anymore. It's, uh, yeah it's it's not it's not working for me and i really apologize but i, so, I i'm curious and by the way thank you for your vulnerability i genuinely appreciate it and i i mean that sincerely okay um what wasn't working for you can let's all right let's go through it let's go through this cuz this is going to help everybody that's watching right now what wasn't working? Can you articulate that to me? Um, sure. It was, yeah. um, I was working 12 hour days and then taking time off to go to him. And, you know, we'd have a great time and I'd stay and I had to find a place for my dogs. I'd have to like, uh, um, get a sitter for the dogs. So it was financially draining for me. And, okay. um, you know, we didn't like spend a whole lot of money or anything, but um, it was just exhausting. I was exhausted. So and he was having a whole time and, you know, you know, okay, well, so you can come to my house. <laughs> that was great. But so 
I'm going to be candid with you. You still haven't gotten to the root of the why. Like, why did you say this wasn't working for me? Now, first off, really quickly, oh. ladies who are watching, oh, really quickly, um, Jonathan Fan, I want to acknowledge something. Okay, you made a financial investment in him and you made the physical effort to drive towards him, okay? So what I'm already observing is an imbalance of effort, okay? The, your, your effort was here and his effort was here. Now, I'll be candid with you, that space in between is often known as drama, okay? Yeah. Women have a propensity to say, I'm doing all this for you and you're not doing this for me. And so they're in that space, it becomes very dramatic. I'm not saying that's what you did. I'm saying that traditionally happens. So let's come back to this. This is really important. You're helping people here. What wasn't working for you? The thing that wasn't working, I, I actually asked him, I said, so, you know, if you come to my house, then I don't have to rent a dog sitter. Okay, you know. okay. He said he couldn't. And I mean, what reason told, did he give for, I apologize, what? He, he just basically told me no. Okay, so what reason did he give you for no? Um, something about his, you know, spending gas. He was kind of, he was, see, he was a good guy, but he was in a really unstable place in his life. He was okay. retired, but he didn't have enough money and he was making sure that he could pay for his house. And he was working at his dad's orchard, doing a bunch of How stuff. How old was and, he, by the way? Uh, he's, uh, 66. 66. I'm 60. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, your age again? Three. 63. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So he didn't have the financial means to travel to you. And so you made the effort to travel to him, but there's something deeper that you're not saying here because I, I, what I'm, and I'm going to speculate now, but, um, because that, okay. It, it's more than just he didn't come to you. There is something else that wasn't working for you. Yeah, he wasn't. I don't feel like he really. I don't think I, that we really had a future, really, honestly. I didn't think okay. that there was any possibility of anything ever going any farther. Okay, so it's fascinating to me, though. And by the way, I appreciate your bravery. Um, and, and by the way, you notice I'm not being my traditional dick that I am to women on my channel because I, because I'll be, sometimes I just get irritated with stupidity, but, um, I've got to own, that's my shit. That's my projection. And I'm, I'm, stupid, I, I'm stupid. You told me I was stupid and I listened yeah. to you. Okay. But so my point is, is I, I, I recognize that I'm not as big a teddy bear as I should ought to be at times. Okay. With that said. You. What fascinates, pardon me? Just be you. Yeah, okay. So what fascinates me though is you were in love with him. Yeah. Sad. So I, I wonder if it was real genuine love. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering if it was an unhealthy attachment to this person because I don't think a person, and, and I'm also gonna say, I also wanna even go a step further and I'm saying, your choice of this relationship was abandoning your own self-love because it's, I, I think a hum, a, if you're accommodating him right from the beginning by traveling to him, you're abandoning yourself. And so each date, I mean, granted, you might've drove to him for the first date, but he should have come to you the next one and you go to him and he comes to you. The minute you abandon your own standard, you then I can't, I don't believe you were in a position to love him in a healthy way. I wonder if you loved him in an unhealthy way. Can you expand upon that? I, it's just, that's the way that I did things, but I'm really working at making that different now. Yeah. I'm changing the way I relate to people and I'm not going to be in a relationship until I can relate to them in a healthy way. And that's just the way that it's going to be from here on out. Yeah. So, well, first off, bravo to you. I love hearing that. Uh, by the way, yeah, I want you to woohoo. I am, I am you. worthy. Okay. That, that is you. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you. Oh, expand so, upon that. 
Um, just your, you know, your crazy rants and the Jonathan, all the <laughs> nonsense. You know, it's just, uh, yeah. Thank you. Ah, oh, you just made my day. I had someone that was mean to me the other day on my YouTube channel, and I'm like, even. By the way, I have the thinnest skin on the planet. By the way, huh? Let's just ignore them. There's thirty. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I'm, I'm, I'm also. I read because I am always participating. So, in my my work. So, um. All right. Have, are, what are you all doing right. now? Have, what, um, I'm, I'm in Canada right now. I just got off of a, a seminar. And, uh, okay, but what, I'm, I don't mean right this moment. What are you doing now to attract love in your life? Are you on the dating apps? Have you gone, you know, you haven't had, when was the last, so you haven't done anything. I'm not, I'm not going out. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be with my family and I'm going to get better at being me. And I'm going to just like live life, you know, to go to dog parks and grocery stores and I have a couple groups that I'm in and yeah. that's just, that's all I'm doing. I'm not you know, it. and here's the thing, the most important relationship I invite you to curate is the relationship with yourself. But folks, anyone who's over 60 watching this, okay, um, you know, I, I'm sorry to say it from a from a pessimistic point of view, it's just a realistic point of view. I mean, the odds aren't in our favor, okay? And 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 I hope my work is much like the Hunger Games. May the odds forever be in your favor, okay? Because it's like the Hunger Games. Like there's one out of, what is it, 12 people? There's 11 people trying to kill you. <laughs> there are 11 people trying to fuck with your emotional chi is what I mean by that. And putting the odds in your favor means building your own sovereignty. So you're the strongest warrior out there. You don't need to physically kill anyone, but you protect you. you and I don't even want to say protect, but you're so protected in your bubble of self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-reliance, self-determination, self-discipline. You are so encompassed in your sovereignty that it doesn't matter whether or not you're in a relationship or not. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Yes, it resonates. Okay. Well, sweetheart, uh, from the bottom of my heart, if it's okay, I use that term of endearment. Can I reach into the camera and give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? I got you, guy. Uh, thank thank you. you so much for being on. Thanks. Wow, what a great share from our Jonathan fan. Um. Folks, there's nothing easy about this thing called dating, mating, and relating. And we can put ourselves out there just much like she did. We can put ourselves out there and it's good that we put ourselves out there. I think she stood up for herself at the end. Could she have done it a few months sooner? Probably. Sometimes we have to go through these experiences to really learn as much about ourselves. But at the end of the day, what she did was make a stand for her sovereignty. And that's my invitation for everybody here. My channel isn't about whether or not you meet the love of your life. It's not about understanding all the different ways men show they care and all these different things. My message to everybody is to love, find the relationship within themselves first because that matters most. And by the way, I've worked with women in their 60s and 70s who have found love. So it is absolutely possible, even though the odds are against us, it is absolutely possible. I invite you all to curate a life, become the reality show people want to watch. Become the reality show people want to watch. Because within that, you curate a life that is so juicy, delicious, healthy, and happy that you become a magnetic attractor. You are not looking for a needle in the haystack. You have become the electromagnet that tracks that person into your life. And that's my invitation for all of you to dive into your sovereignty. Jane Spitfire. By the way, my favorite three words on the planet are, you are right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I, when somebody says that, I always say, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Jane. Can you write it down again? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I have an ego. I do. I'm going to own it. I'm, a, I'm not a perfect human being.